we live in the valley, not on the mountaintop. We live in Hawaii, not in Fiji. We have problems galore here. The devil is alive and well in the valleys. So when we seek only the high experiences, we miss the point. The greater life is taking both. Sure, we need the mountaintop, but you remember, you will come down. You must come down because life is basically lived in the valley. And that's why you have problems. That's why I have problems. That's why we have problems. It's part of the package. Shortcut it and you'll miss the point of what the greater life was meant to be. Narere. That's the area of Suva where Ru lives. It's one of the low income areas in all of Suva. That's where Ru and Kim were robbed and roughed up. That's where drugs is an everyday experience for the youth that they're trying to minister to. That, my friend, is where they live. That is where you and I live in the valley. So if we are going to experience the greater life, don't skip the valley. Don't try to live on the mountaintop. Thirdly, one of the uh, roadblock to the greater life is staying or living or trying to live where success is happening. You know, when you're successful there, we tend to interpret that that means God want me here and I must go and stay here forever. Read with me Mark 1, 35 through 38. Ready, begin. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out on an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well. And I will preach them too. That is why I came. Jesus was in his stride. The people were coming to see him. And Jesus made time that day early in the morning to be alone so he could talk and fellowship with the Father. The disciples came and found him and they said, the people are looking for you. I mean, we're missing a great opportunity. We're missing a great avenue of service to the Lord by not being there to meet their needs. Jesus said, we must go on to the other towns as well. Forget about the success here. Forget about the crowd. Let's move on out. When the Holy Spirit came upon the Christians in the book of Acts, the disciples outside of the twelve were chased out and persecuted in Jerusalem. So they left, went out to Judea and Samaria. Philip was one of the first ones, you remember Philip, one of the seven in the food ministry. Started to preach and teach and many people were converted and even demons were leaving the people that they were processing. God in the midst of Philip's success in Samaria. God said, Philip, I want you to go south. Go south. And you know what's there? One eunuch from Ethiopia. From the midst of a success in the crowd, God said, I want you to go to just one man, the eunuch. And of course, the rest of the story, X8, was the fact that the eunuch became a follower of the Lord Jesus. Be careful when you're successful. It does not necessarily mean that that is where God wants you to be. We were in Samoa seven years. From all the outward appearances, 
we were very successful. We started a church in American Samoa. We went to Western Samoa, started a church there. We started a school, and we built our dream house. Lena design, designed it, and tell the, the architect, this is what we want. We thought we were going to live there forever, or until we die, of course. Our house, we were told, was one of the third prettiest house in the whole island. Now, if you think that didn't make me feel good, you're wrong. I had my vanity side, and I said, whoa, Ray, you made it. You didn't make the house for your parents, but you may be the next governor here with a house like that. In a year and a half, in a year and a half after we did all of this, start the school, started churches and helping the Korean church and the Chinese church, the Lord jerked us out of Samoa in a year and a half, and there goes the house and everything that goes with it. It seems to be an interesting development. We were in Nanakuli. We built an education building. We left. We went to Samoa, seven years. We built several buildings and a school. We left. We went to Makakilo. <laughs> we built maybe one of the prettiest buildings you'll ever see in this life, and we're leaving. So I don't know what that means, but it seems like God's always saying, now that thing is uh, beginning to be on its feet, it's time for you to move on. So be careful how you interpret success. You know, I really was looking forward to preaching at least a whole year in that new building. Now I'm going to let you preach there. I'll do the praying. So, roadblock number three. Be careful of staying where success is happening to you. God may have something different, maybe even better. Number four, or number five, rather. No, number four. Looking to man to meet your basic need. One of the roadblocks of the greater life is when we look at other people, mankind, John 4, verse 13 through 14. Read that with me. Jesus replied, 